You're watching ABC 7 News at 7.30. Um, David, wh why write this book? I mean, why, why do you have to tell people to spend more money? And my message is, is so game-changing when it comes to uh, retirement. Because what happened was I sat down with thousands of baby boomers. I'm a financial advisor, and I'm sitting down with all of these baby boomers, and I'm noticing a trend. I asked them two questions. The first question is, how much money do you want left over when you die? And do you know what they say to me, almost every single person? Hmm. Nothing. Yeah. I want that last check to bounce. And then I ask them, well, when are you going to start spending some of this retirement savings? Do you know what they say to me? Yeah. I have no idea. I guess when I have to. I get, and I say, but so you're not going to spend any money until you have to, but you don't want to die with any money. There's something that's not adding up here. There's a disconnect. Yeah. There's a disconnect. And as I'm starting to look into the research, there's all kinds of government data that I'm not going to bore you with, but it's pointing to the fact that about one third of baby boomers, that's 25 million people, are in danger of dying with more money than they've ever had in their lives. So that, that hoped for figure of zero is way off. Folks are dying with thousands and thousands and tens hundreds of, of hundreds thousands. of thousands. Really? Yes. And they're underliving. They're living like they're broke, even though they have a bunch of money in the bank. Now, this doesn't apply to everyone. If you haven't saved any money, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people that have saved at least $200,000. And my, well, think about this. My grandfather, my grandfather was a school teacher in a small country town outside of Pittsburgh, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can hear an accent. Uh, he was from a, a small town, uh, never made more than $25,000 a year. He died when he was 89 years old. We're going through his stuff, his bank, his bank statements. He had $900,000 in his bank account. It's amazing. It probably bought some Heinz stock when it was like pennies too, so he probably had a lot of that as well. It was mostly in CDs, honestly. Wow. He had just obsessively saved money his entire life, and when we looked at his bank statements, he had saved money every single month up until the month that he died. Wow. Which is great news for you, but, but not, that was not his best life living. Oh, because my mom and my aunt, who got the money, they even said, they said, Dad, like, what were you waiting for? Mom always wanted to take that trip. Mom always wanted to, you know, redo the kitchen. We, there's all these things that we wanted to do. Never happened. Okay, so I'm going to be very clear. I'm going to pull back the curtain and tell exactly your audience what to do. Are you ready? All right, we got 30 seconds. Do it quick. You want to spend the money that the money is making. So you, if you have a 3% CD and you're getting 3%, spend that. See, we're being responsible. We're not spending the money. We're just spending the money that the money is making. Makes sense. That's a good tip. And I'm sure we'll have more good tips and more keen insight as we are just getting warmed up in our... ABC7, serving Palmetto and the entire Sun Coast. You're watching ABC7 News at 7.30. And welcome back in. Tonight we're looking at baby boomers leaving lots of money on the table as David Kennan, author of The Retirement Revolution, Spend More, Worry Less, tells us that doesn't have to be. Well, if you think about it, for everyone watching this right now, and if their parents were alive during the Great Depression, if they were raised by Depression-era parents, you have been infected with this Depression-era mentality. How could you not be? If your whole life as a kid, your parents are saying, you never know what might happen, everything could fall apart. If you spend any of this money, everything could fall apart. So baby boomers are stuck with this depression era mentality, and it comes back to the revolution. The retirement revolution is all about not living scared, but living empowered and confident. And again, I want to be very clear, to join the retirement revolution, there's a couple rules. You have to have at least $200,000 in retirement savings. And once you retire, you're going to take the money that the money is making. If your portfolio of stocks and bonds is returning 5% on average, spend that money. Take the 5%. If the CD is returning 3%, spend the money. And sometimes people will say to me, Dave, if you send me that 5% or whatever it is, I don't really need it. Can I just wait to take the money out when I need it? And I say, no, no. The whole point of the retirement revolution is that you get to spend the money that the money is making. And if there's extra money left over at the end of the month, guess what you get to do? You get to enjoy Live it. Live it up. Live it up. And 
if someone decides to go ahead and join this revolution, does it does it flip their life uh, like their flip like their flip it thinking? Does I've seen it firsthand. I've seen people very very scared, not wanting to spend any money, living their lives, kind of going. I hope I'm going to be okay. I hope if I spend this two thousand dollars on a trip, I'm not going to bankrupt myself twenty years later. And I say, stop the madness. Put a plan together. Start, you know, invest the money, and then take the earnings and enjoy that part of it. Now, as far as the investment, uh, you're you're kind of talking about a five percent return. Uh, are we looking at annuities? Are we looking at stocks? Certainly not these days, bonds. But uh, is, is it a variety of things just based on what their portfolio is or has been? My generic advice is you want to invest in a diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds with at least half of the money in stocks. If you look historically speaking, that's really never not returned 5% over time. So usually I recommend 5% of your portfolio each year. And like I said, enjoy the money. And really, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to help people because I'm tired of seeing people living scared and dying rich. I mean, think about that for a second. Living scared and dying rich because all of these people um, end up with all this money. Yeah. No, I, did, I, just, I love my job. I love what I do because I, I get to give people all this good news and I get to inform them. Uh, they have these misconceptions that, that almost every baby boomer has. And once I kind of clear up those misconceptions, I can see Oh, it's like, okay, like I, know, like I have a, a plan. Oh. Uh, but all of this is sound advice, isn't it, Michael? For, for the people who have, who have enough saved and have right. enough in retirement, yes, absolutely.